Hello, everybody. I don't even know if that caught that. <clears throat> um, I've been recording a bunch of stuff, music-wise, and um, I'm all pissed off now because it goes against everything I believe in to take the time and do something right. So it's making me a bit on the side. So, um, but we've been unpacking a bunch and I found not all of them for some fucking reason, but, um, a bunch of my He-Man, um, Masters of the Universe, um, mini comics that came with the figures. Now, um, those of you who are my age or around my age, like, this is, like, I just, like, hit a sweet spot, and you guys are, like, freaking the fuck out right now. Um, but I was going through, and I'm like, dude, like, where is blankety blank, and where is blankety blank? So, I'm hoping that some of these turn up in another box, and if they do, I'll do another video. But, um, it's kind of irritating because some of them I had ordered like within the last couple of years on eBay. Um, like for instance, there's Ram man, like there's a Ram man one that like, I know I got, um, and it's not here. So, and there's a few others that we'll talk about, but, um, so I figured I would do kind of a little um, dealio about these. Um, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I got a bunch here, you know, blah, 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 blah. Turns out there's 49. Um, and there's an actual book that's been on my fucking Christmas wish list for like three years now. And I still don't have it. But it's um, a big He-Man, Masters of the Universe collection that has all 49 of the mini-comics and has the She-Ra mini-comics and has um, a couple other cool little bits in it. Um, but when the line first started... Um, before the cartoon came out, um, you had these, and I only have three of them out of the four. You had these three, like, or four, um, kind of picture book comics. So we have, um, He Man and the Power Sword, um, The King of Castle Grayskull. And Battle in the Clouds. This was the first one I got because the first character I got was Merman. And I remember it was at a Save-On drugstore on the corner of Lincoln and Valley View. Um, and the thing was, the reason why I picked him, I got him and like the... Skeletor's car with the buzzsaw around it, I don't know, <clears throat> was because I was really into swimming at the time, and I loved being in the pool, and like my favorite superhero at the time was Aquaman, because I had, um, because he was in the water, but also because I had um, orange arm floaties, so I always... When I put those on, I'm like, oh, I'm Aquaman. Because back in the day, Aquaman used to have, like, a goldfish-looking sweater that he wore. Um, but, yeah, so I had... The, this is the first one I got. And this was in a ton of the figures, it seemed like. It seemed like every figure I got had um, this comic in it. And if you look, it's more like a little story. Um... It's cool. And then in the middle, you have... I love these. Because then I was like, oh, look at all the stuff I could get. Um, And... Let me see. Did I get all of these? I had all of them except Tila until I was older. 
And then I got Tila just to finish that set. I had the Wind Raider. But that was all of the um, other stuff. And then you'd have these awesome like ads. I had that car too. Um, oh, so cool. And then um, the King of Castle Grayskull. Um, I think... Is this the one that explains... Yeah, the two halves of the power sword. Um, if you ever wondered why He-Man's sword was like a half of a sword and they only did stuff on one side was because He-Man had one sword and Skeletor had the other. And um, if you put the two halves together... It acted as a key to open the door of Castle Grayskull. See, see, see. Yeah. Um, so that's good times. Good times. Collect them all. Um, and this has a more color. Look at that beast man. He's just like a big red fur ball. And I always hated the man-at-arms right here. His thing always covered his face, like in the comics. But you could never make that happen <laughs> with the toys. Oh, yeah, right here. See? Um, the other thing is, <clears throat> when He-Man started before um, the animated show and DC took over, he was just like a barbarian. Like cruising around, you know, and Tila was green for some reason, because she was a snake person, but then you have this Tila, who is different, I think the Tila in green was the sorceress, oh yeah, 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 the sorceress, um, before they found out, like, oh, we can make the sorceress look different, but see, they fucked up because they put Tila next to the snake lady. So um, there's a lot of inconsistencies between the comics and um, what actually happens, I guess. So anyway, so that's the first run. The second run... Oh, and which one am I missing? I'll tell you which one I'm missing here. I am missing... The Vengeance of Skeletor, which just sucks. So these are from 81. So the original action figures were packaged with mini comics with stories about the characters. Written by Don Glutt and illustrated by Alfredo, Alfredo P. Alacala. The first four stories in booklet form had one image per page with text underneath. In the early, he, in the early comics, he man was a wandering barbarian on Eternia a world dealing with the aftermath of a war which devastated its civilizations and left behind fantastic machinery and weapons. So it's kind of like a post-apocalyptic thing. Um, the war opened a rift between dimensions, allowing the evil warlord Skeletor to travel to Eternia. Skeletor has set his sights on the ancient castle Grayskull, a fortress of mystery and power, Whoever controls Grayskull will become master of the universe. To prevent Skeletor from achieving his goal, He-Man has just received special powers and weapons from the Sorceress and defends the castle from Skeletor. To distinguish these stories from the mini-comics, which were released... To distinguish these stories from the mini comics that were released as tie ins with the TV series, fans called this version of Eternia Mini Eternia or Mini Eternia or more commonly Savage Eternia. Wow, there's only four fucking books, guys. Don't come up with three different names to fucking describe it. So, anyway, so those are those. <clears throat> and then when DC took over, um, they became, like, more comic book um, form. Oh, these were so great. Like, I swear to God, if I picked up a figure at a store that had a mini comic in it that I already had, I would put the figure down. I'd be like, I'm like, no, this ain't happening. Um, but then I realized that usually they came with the same one all the time. So... Um, I just ended up having to do trades with 
with the bros. So, um, oh, dude, look at that. Great stuff. So, um, this one, uh, this is the second series. Let me just make sure I'm not effing this up since I'm going all hardcore on y'all here. Um, He-Man meets Ram Man. I know I have it, but it's not here. Um, the Ordeal of Many Faces. Many Faces. I know I've had at least three copies of that. I can't find it. Um, then we have the Terror Triclops. And then we have the Menace of Trapjaw. And for those of you who dig, like... Because, see, this is what Trapjaw looks like in the comics. And that's what Trapjaw looks like um, in the in toy form. But Mattel is, like, putting out um, figures that match the comics and stuff now. So this trap jaw you could actually get. And he looks so fucking cool. Like, if I still had money falling out of my asshole and um, gave a shit, I'd be buying that crap up. So, the Menace of Trap Jaw. The Tale of Tila, I don't think I ever had. The Magic Stealer and the Power of Point Dread. I don't know why there's such a ellipses on that. And it's so funny because like they're just trying to like hawk the toy, the little like flying machine. And it was probably and one thing that was cool, it came with this uh part of Castle Grey Skull, so you could like attach it to Castle Grey Skull. But it was such a janky fucking um plane. <laughs> It was janky as shit. Um, and they don't even have it in the toy thing on the back. But, I mean, just the battles and shit are so fucking great in here. Such a janky plane. And then the Wind Raider, or whatever it is, that green thing, this thing. I don't know if you can see it good. I had that, and, like, that shit broke so much. But, like, the cool thing was is it had a fucking rope that shot out the front of it. Oh, and then here it is sitting on Castle Grayskull. So you could do that with it. Okay. So, let me read to you a little bit about this series of the comics. I can't believe I only have fucking three of these. Jesus Christ. I know they're here, dude. I just gotta find them. Okay. Uh, okay, when Wave 2 mini-comics were produced by DC, they changed many aspects from the original four books. Written by Carrie Kahn and illustrated by Mark Texteria. I don't fucking know. Um, He-Man no longer was a wandering barbarian, but resides at the Royal Palace and is supported by allies such as Man-at-Arms, the attorney and master of weapons, whom DC changed to be the adopted father to Tila. Skeletor finds one half of the power sword, the key to Castle Grayskull. He man received the other half from the sorceress, and must prevent Skeletor from linking the two halves, and then two halves become a hole, and then Skeletor could crawl through the hole and escape. No, that's not what it is. Um, and gaining access to the castle. DC introduced many new elements like a king and queen, the royal palace, as well as more sci fi themed villains like Trapjaw. Okay. So, um, that's, oh, dude, look at this. This is so awesome. It has a little asterisk at the bottom, and it's like these are available soon Ram Man, Trapjaw, Triclops. Zor. And many faces. So, none of these guys were out when this thing came out? How fucking stupid is that? Oh, good times. <sighs> okay, so now, the next bit is... Um, this is after Filmation started doing the actual... Uh, cartoon um, 
Okay, so we have, oh, you know what? Let me just pull that up. I'm sorry, guys. So we have the dragon's gift, and this was based on one of the episodes. And, um, man, just look at it. It's so cool. And if you look at the back, this is when they were pushing Battle Armor He-Man and Battle Armor Skeletor, which were awesome. Just saying. Um, so yeah, the Dragon's Gift was the first one. And then we have everyone's favorite hero, Fisto. Um, I think Steve said he had like a big Fisto poster or something hanging up in his bathroom. It's kind of weird. And there's a Fisto punch and trap jaw. Um, but yeah, so the Mass of Power, this was based off the TV episode. Ready? Mass of Power. And um, you put on these masks and turn into these creature things. It's pretty cool. Oh, man. Oh, and how cute is that? It's Pride Month. And there's like a rainbow that lands right on Fisto's butt. I mean, you can't fucking write this shit, people. That's exactly how this goes. Alright, so anyway. Um, then we have the Secret Liquid of Life. Um, and it's He-Man versus Geldor. Now, Geldor looks fucking badass. And this was based on the episode Valley of Power. I was so pissed that they didn't make a Geldor figure. Because Geldor just looks freaking awesome. Um, oh, and you have some like big giant caterpillar crap. Um, yeah, freaking rad. Um, and then He-Man and the Insect People, which was not based on an episode, but this has Buzz Off and Mechanek. And this is back when the Sorceress was just in all white, which I don't think ever actually happened. Um, oh, these are so fun. And the comics were way better than the cartoon. Because if you remember the cartoon, the cartoon was just like, hey, you need to buy this toy, so we're going to show you everything that it does. Oh, I loved that when Mechanek used his neck to hit that guy in the throat. I used to do that with him with everybody. Good times. And then we have uh, the Temple of Darkness. Oh, wait. No, the double-edged sword. Based on the episode, the double-edged sword. Um, this one I liked a lot because it had, um, like, man-eating plants. <laughs> and not man-eating plants. Because who wants to have salad? Am I right? Um, oh, and this has Cobra Khan and Evil Lynn. Really cool. Um, oh yeah, but look at this. I used to love that. Good stuff. Okay, and then we have, what's next on the list? The Temple of Darkness. Based on the episode, The Temple of the Sun. Let's see... Are, are we hawking any stuff in here? Anything really exciting happening? Giant bugs. That's cool. Very Conan-ish. Yeah, this one was kind of boring. Like, the cover makes it seem like it's going to be really fun. I used to love this one just because it looked like he-Man was effed. Slave City. Based on the episode, A Tale of Two Cities. Hmm. Hmm. But these dudes in it are so cool. 
Oh, and I love that mohawk, dude. Um, do they have, like, a good shot of all of these, or just that first page? Like, these dudes looked awesome. Like, yes, please, give me those. <clears throat> and then we have The Siege of Avion, based on the TV episodes, Reign of the Monster, <clears throat> and Betrayal of Stratos. Avion is where Stratos lives. And I don't know why I don't have that. And then the Clash of Arms. Not based on anything. But, oh, this one has Jitsu in it. I bet that's where I got this one. And Clawful. Oh, dude, Clawful. Yes, yes, yes. He was like a giant lobster. Or crab. And he had a claw. And he was awful. See? Yep, yep, yep. Um, oh, and Whiplash. Whiplash had this tail and you could, like, whip it. Whip it good. Boom, bird, boom, bird, boom. Yeah, good stuff. And then, like we end every good He-Man comic, they're laying down together or, like, stuck in a saddle together. He-Man and Fisto riding off into the sunset. Now, so that was the third series. And the fourth series, this is what's tripping me out. Oh, wait, no, the fifth series is what's tripping me out. So, anyway, the obelisk. This fucking mini-comic seemed to come with every fucking character. And when I would trade my friends for stuff, I ended up with so many of this fucking comic. So annoying. Um, it's very 2001. Like, this obelisk shows up. And nobody knows what it is, so everyone's trying to, like, fight to keep it. Oh, and you had the awesome um, Snake Mountain-looking thing. Because in the comics, Snake Mountain just looked like a mountain with a snake wrapped around it. I mean, in the cartoon. Um, yeah, and then you had all these, like, scary monster dudes come out. Super fun. Okay, the Battle of Robato. Um, this one probably came with Robato, but Robato was awesome. He, and this is one of those things that I really liked about He Man is like, you would have some figure, and then there would be like almost like a mirror image of that figure. So Robato was basically Trapjaw, like a good guy Trapjaw. And, um, oh, and I had the land shark. That was so cool. I remember I took that to, um, show and tell in kindergarten. Um, oh, and too bad. Man, I hope you guys are having as much fun as I am doing this because I'm realizing this video probably looks a bit shit. Um, so Skeletor's Dragon... Um, I don't have. And then we have Spike or Strikes. Um, and in this one we have... Um, what is his name in here? Cyclone? I think this is the comic where they actually call him one thing and then like a couple pages later give him a different name. Um, it happens in one of these. Uh, so they called him Cyclone at first, and then, let me see, Cyclone, watch, this isn't even the one where they do it, I don't know, whatever, I'll figure it out. Uh, 
No, they're still calling him Cyclone. We beat him with teamwork. Yeah, they called him Cyclone all through this. So this one had Cyclone and um, Spike or and I'm sure there was somebody else in here. I just can't remember. Okay. And then you had the Stench of Evil, Stinkor. Stinkor is awesome. And he had Mechanex, um, Chestplate, and uh, Merman's Head. So that was another cool thing. Oh, and this one has Moss Man in it. Oh, look, and the sorceress turned into a pink outfit. She changed her clothes for the comic. That's that's awesome. Um, yeah, they've never been able to, like, nail Moss Man in the comic, in the mini-comics. He always looks kind of stupid. But I always thought he looked badass. Oh, and it has the big... Um, I had that, too. The big... Uh, skeleton of like a dinosaur and you can put all the guys in its rib cages in its rib cage and it was kind of like a carrying case is that supposed to be stratos oh yeah it is he just looked a bit dark um but yeah so this is awesome Oh, I don't know why they never changed, like, all the guys you could get. I mean, they sometimes did. Okay, so now we're getting into the fun shit. Because we have the evil horde. And, like, you could... I had everything on the back here. I had that all. So, um... Grizzlore, the legend, comes alive. Um... Super awesome. Look at that. How scary is that? Just super cool. Uh-oh, one of the pages is coming out. Gotta make that not happen. I loved Hordak. The problem is, and everyone knows this, the reason why He-Man fell out of favor is because they stopped making the He-Man cartoon and started making the She-Ra cartoon. And Hordak... And the Evil Horde were fucking awesome and just, like, kick-ass villains. And um, so what they ended up doing was instead of selling Hordak and the Evil Horde with the She-Ra um, figures, on the toys and in the mini-comics, they turned the Evil Horde as, like, a foe of He-Man. And with Shira, they just did um, Katra, I think her name is. Um, yeah, so. And then the Snake Men come into it. Um, and this is Leech, right? Yeah. And in the comics, he looks like giant and terrifying. I don't know why they went that route with it. Um. But Hordak looks awful in this comic. I just always thought he looked like such a douchebag. But um, I loved the evil Horde. I thought Hordak was so bitchin'. Uh, and then here we have Mantena. And he could just make his eyes come up a little bit. Super cool, right guys? Yeah. Because if we need... Oh, there's Orko for all the Orko fans in the room. And what's funny is Mantena has four legs and they only give him two right there on the cover. Oh, and then you have the Fright Zone and the puppet thing. It's about to come out and get him. Oh, dude, I love Fright Zone. Like, that was such a fun playset. Man, I just want to, like, play with toys right now. Like, some weird little awkward kid. So cool. All right. Um, and then we have Hordak, the Ruthless Leader's Revenge. I don't know where that is. It's not here. But then I have the Treachery of Modulok. Modulok was so fucking cool. 
because it was like this toy that you could like take apart and put together in a bunch of different ways. And I had more fun with Modulock than probably any other figure because I could just take Modulock with me. And I came up with a way to make um, two figures, a dog and a cat. The cat looked more like a snail, and the dog only had two legs. But um, in my imagination, it all worked out. But I would just take those guys, and um, and then look at this. Like, they get a bunch of body parts in the mail. And they're like, huh, what? Let's all touch them and pour them out and see what happens. Uh, so funny. And they're like, this is really weird. And then, like, what happens? Oh, yeah. When no one's looking, Modulock forms and runs out. He's going to F some stuff up. Ah, oh, he was so cool. I think I still have him somewhere in a sandwich bag. In a Ziploc bag. Oh, Modulock, you crazy, crazy fucker. Okay. And then, in the fifth series, this is when everything starts going downhill for me. So we have Rock People to the Rescue. Okay. Now, on the back here, we have Flying Fist, He-Man, and Dragon Claw Skeletor. And um, the Laser Bolt Bike thing. Anyway, there's a bunch of ones that I'm missing here. So Flying Fist of Power, King of the Snake Men, which I know I have multiple copies of. Um, the Terror Claws Strike, Escape from the Slime Pit, which I have because I still have my Slime Pit. The Menace of Multibot. Um, and then I'll get to the rest. So let's look at the Rock People. The Rock People were kind of cool, but kind of dumb. Because they could fold up into rocks, but they were so flimsy, I was always afraid I was going to break them. I think they're Stone Dar and Rock On. Like, wow, good, good job with your names, guys. But this one has Webster in it, the big spider guy, who's super cool. Um, it's just sad that his name was Webster in a time when there was a show called Webster about a little tiny kid. Um, but I think his name is Web Store, like the store where you buy webs at. Also stupid. Okay. And then we have... The Warrior Machine. Wow. If you want to look at where they started, like, really falling off the map, look at these shit toys. Whose idea was this crap? The Jet Sled. The Heroic Rocket Sled and Jet Pack. The Mega Laser. Heroic Wind Up Beam Blaster. And the Stilt Stalkers. Heroic battle stilts. So in just case you wanted to be taller, you could have these stilts that make you heroic. Or the stilts themselves are heroic. So this has um, Dragster, who was a cool figure. But dude, if you wanted to kill somebody, that dude was like die-cast metal. And if you like grabbed him by a leg and just swung at somebody, you would knock all their fucking teeth out. So that's what he looks like in the comic there. And again, this is the warrior machine. And um, <clears throat> for some reason, um, the person they decided to go with to help He-Man battle Dragster was Extendar, who is a superhero whose arms and legs grow like an inch and a half, and his neck gets a little taller. See, look, he's extending. Oh, man, I can feel the extensive power of my extending limbs. Oh, shit's about to get real, says Extendar. Um, and then they were just kind of re reaching the bottom of the barrel here. We have Rio Blast. This is the fastest draw in the universe. And Rio Blast is just some awesome dude with like a porn star stash. 
serious. And um, he just had a lot of guns. Oh, yep, here he is. Blasting away with all of his guns. Um, I think later they put him in the same category as Zodak. Like one of the actual galaxy watchers or whatever. They've changed the um, shit on He-Man quite a bit. And then the last one I have here is the search for Keldor. Now, Keldor um, is Randor, King Randor's long-lost brother. That um, Oh, dude. And guess who's in this one? Ninjor and everyone's favorite, Scareglow. And yeah, you saw that right. A bunch of pages just fell out of this. That's awful. Um, so I'm going to... Oh, no. Pages are falling out. I'm going to ruin something for you here, guys. Oh, and Clamp Champ's in this. And Faker... Faker was the fake He-Man that even though he was fucking blue and had orange hair, nobody knew that it wasn't really He-Man. Um, but yeah, so Keldor ended up being Skeletor. So Skeletor and King Randor are related, which means Skeletor is in fact um, He-Man's uncle. So... You know, go figure. <clears throat> so, all my Snake Men comics are gone. I don't know why. But, um, The Eye of the Storm, The Hordes of Hordak, Between a Rock and a Hard Place, Snake Attack, and The Ultimate Battleground, I can't find. I'm hoping to hope that they're in a box somewhere. And then the sixth series was The Search for Keldor, which I just showed you. Enter Buzzsaw Hordak, Revenge of the Snake Men, Energy Zoids, which again was a horrible idea. And Buzzsaw Hordak wasn't even that great. And then The Powers of Grayskull, The Legend Begins, and The Cosmic Key. And I'm assuming those were um, tie-ins with uh, the movie, um, the Masters of the Universe movie. <coughs> Because the Cosmic Key was a big uh, plot point in that. So anyway, that was fun. I got to show you... Uh, let's not do that right now. got to show you a bunch of stuff. And I've been keeping my He-Man in this Halloween Ziploc bag from like 2003, I think. 2003 or 2004. Maybe 2002, actually. Um... But that's just funny that this Ziploc bag has stood the test of time. That doesn't tell you stuff about plastic, folks. And see, blue and red make purple. So, that's all good. Alright guys, this video was much longer than anticipated. So I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.